With the default settings of Blender, this single frame render took 9 minutes 21 seconds on cycles. So if I wanted to make an animation with 650 frames on cycles with the default settings, just like this one, it would take 4.2 days. Because if one frame is 9 minutes 21 seconds, basically whole animation would be 364,650 seconds, which is a bit more than 4 days. But I did this animation in a bit more than one and a half hours. Let me show you how. Everything in this video is about cycles and I'm gonna show you five tips about how to speed up your renders. So this is the scene you saw at the beginning of the video. Here we have the Alfa Romeo from my Blender Advanced course and we have two more cars on the other side which are also from my Blender Advanced course and I also have my beginner's course if you are new to channel and if you want to learn Blender for car design you can check out on my website. And if you are not new to the channel, hi again, it's good to see you. So here we have the cars and we have a tree and we have like a nice house here plus a little garage. These are actually separate. Let me put material preview to have more smooth process. And a shout out here to Blender Kit because I downloaded all these assets from their add-on. Like here you can search what you need, like a house, and it will show several results or you can search materials and other things as well. So it was very helpful for this video to just create secondary elements rather than an empty ground and the car itself. So I just wanted to show you the scene a little bit. Now we can jump into the tips. The tip number one is the hardware change. By default on Blender, we have the CPU here and I'm using an MSI laptop, which I'm very happy with because it also has an RTX graphics card inside. So rather than CPU, I can change it to my graphics card. Edit, preferences, system, and under CUDA, I can change it to GPU RTX 4070 laptop version. So without changing any other settings, when I render with my GPU, it took 1 minute 23 seconds from 9.20 to 1.20, which is pretty cool. But depending on your graphics cards, rather than CUDA, you can also use optics. Which my laptop, I'm able to do that, which this graphics card. So when I do the same render with optics, it took only 49 seconds. So the best hardware I have here is RTX 4070 laptop GPU, and it already decreased my render time drastically. What if I had something even stronger, like RTX 4090? I don't have it here, I don't even have a big PC here. But thanks to today's sponsor, iRender Farm, I was able to use RTX 4090 for this video. Before showing you the numbers, let me tell you a little bit about iRender Farm. Basically, it is a service that you can use by remotely connecting to their devices. They are compatible with all 3D software, renders, plugins and scripts. In our case, it is Blender friendly. With iRender's model, you can install any necessary application just as you would on your own computer. No need to worry about the version compatibility or lack of support for applications or plugins. iRender servers are equipped with high-end NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 and RTX 3090 GPUs and they offer both single GPU and multi GPU systems. So you can use one, two, four, six, or eight RTX 4090s together. So I connected with a server with four RTX 4090s and I rendered exactly the same image. When I activated only one RTX 4090, it took the render in only 25 seconds. On my laptop, it was 49. So it is like double speed and it's impressive. And then, I activated all four RTX 4090s and I hit the render. Can you guess how many seconds it took? Well, I was a little bit shocked because it took 50 seconds. Like four GPUs were slower than one GPU and I couldn't understand. I'm not a tech nerd. I don't understand like all the details. So I contacted them and I asked why did it happen like this? And they explained me with a very simple example. Imagine there are four horses getting ready for the race. And for each render, let's say the race is like 200 meters. On the scenario one, when we had only one horse, you just prepare the horse and send it to race. So it already started. But on the second scenario, when you have four horses, first you need to prepare them one by one. So you spend time at the beginning, which is loading the data from CPU to GPU, because GPUs are our horses. So it takes more preparation time for all these horses. And then when they already start running, our single horse already finished the race because the render time was very short. Because my scene is not that heavy, it is not that a big task, so one GPU is actually doing better than four GPUs. But if the race was longer, 
which they said if the one single frame render was more than two minutes, it would worth to use more than one GPU then. Actually, rather than four separate horses, let's say four horsepower. <laughs> it makes more sense, but you got the point. The tip number two is the noise threshold. Let's first confirm our GPU here, and then let's change the device to GPU. Here by default for the noise threshold, we have 0 0.01. You can read the description here about adaptive sampling threshold. Rather than talking about the technical details of it, I'm gonna tell you that you can play with this number. So if I just make it 0.1, basically we increase the threshold and it decreases the quality of the sample, let's say. But thanks to the great denoise option here, honestly, the difference is not so much visible. Let me show you. So on my laptop, with the threshold by default, it took 49 seconds and the render looks like this. And when I increase the threshold to 0.1, the render looks like this and it took only 11 seconds. So you can see the difference yourself and you can decide if it's worth to speed up or not. And when I tested with the RTX 4090 on iRender farm, the difference is from 25 seconds to 9 seconds. And this is the difference on the renders. So that's why I said at the beginning of the video, if I rendered the animation with only CPU, it would take a bit more than four days, which is a bit more than 100 hours. But with the RTX 4090, it took a bit over one and a half hours. But what about my laptop? When I calculated proportionally, I realized with my laptop, it would take around like a bit above two hours. So these two tips are a bit technical and very important, but now I'm gonna give you three more tips, which are, they sound a little bit stupid, they sound a little bit too simple, but they're really effective. Let me tell you. The tip number three, if you are using a laptop, plug your laptop to electricity. I know it might sound maybe even weird, but I remember a friend of mine told me when you don't plug your laptop, when you use only the battery, sometimes some laptops go to power saving mode or somehow like lower performance mode. You can go to settings, like on my MSI, I can go to settings and use always the high performance. But if you just want to be sure, just plug your laptop. When I tested my laptop with the CUDA 0.01 threshold, it took 1 minute 23 seconds to render. But when I unplugged my laptop, so when it was only on the battery, the same render took 1 minute 42 seconds. So 19 seconds faster just by plugging to electricity. I think it's worth to plug your laptop. The tip number four is the viewport. What I mean is the viewport shading modes. Like right now it's on the cycles shading mode, like render mode on cycles. And when I left it like this and then hit the render, Blender showed me like the remaining render time is like a couple of hours. So I waited a little bit, like around 10 minutes. Then I just stopped it because normally it takes the same render less than one minute when the viewport is something else. For example, in this screenshot, we can see that the GPU is used 95% and the memory is 67% on my laptop because on the background, I can see the viewport is in solid view. But only when I just change the viewport to cycles, the GPU usage is 100% and the memory is 88%. So I think that slows down the rendering process. So it's a very simple trick, just change it to solid view or maybe the wireframe view and hit the render after that. And the tip number five is the background apps. For example, if you have the internet browser, like in my case, the Google Chrome is open, there's Instagram, there is my inbox, some Behance, and I'm watching myself on YouTube. And while doing this, I tested to render because I heard many times it affects a lot. And without background apps, the render takes 1 minute 23 seconds. And while I'm watching myself on YouTube with the Behance and my email is open, the same render took 5 seconds longer with 1 minute 28 seconds. And I didn't even turn on other things like Photoshop or, I don't know, another Blender page and so on. So I think it's better to just close all the other things if you are rendering, just hit the render and go back to whatever you are doing. So your GPU and your memory can focus on rendering. Now oh, this actually reminded me something about the iRender. When you have four different GPUs in one device, you can actually open four different Blender windows and you can render separate things at the same time because each GPU will work on different renders. So it will not affect each other. It's like, I, I just forgot to mention that, but it's also pretty cool usage. Again, iRender, thank you for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching this video. If you have more tips for faster renders, please write down on comments. I'm always interested in getting my renders faster. Let's see this animation again. See you in the next video.